This is raw vegan cheesecake and you know you don't have to freeze it. I just have it frozen because it takes me a while to get through um, certain meals like this higher fat meals that I make and so I keep them in the freezer and just pull pieces out when I'm ready to munch on them so it lasts longer you know <laughs> and this is so delicious uh, raw vegan cheesecake is amazing I, uh, you can just search the YouTube for raw vegan cheesecakes and you will be in a gold mine like I've said on my Instagram and there are so many different versions you can make this one I kind of tailored made tailor made to my preferences but it is so delicious oh my gosh Hi everyone! So a lot of you guys have asked me to do a video on my experience with my first time in an Arizona summer. So that's what's ha currently happening right now. But first of all you guys, I, I definitely going to share with you guys some raw goodies in this video also. I have to because I want to and because it's always good to share the health, the wonderful health of raw foods, right? Well this right here is not technically not raw, but it is close. It's close. It is a pasteurized juice, but I have never had guava juice before and I've always wanted to, okay? But I know this isn't real, like, guava juice. This is, all it says is pear juice and guava, uh, guava puree, right there, okay? Right there. And um, this is, this is, I, I would love to try real guava juice. And I know there's a lot of people in Hawaii who um, uh, that commented to me about having pear juice or guava juice in Hawaii. And I, oh my gosh, I can't imagine what that tastes like. That's gonna taste absolutely phenomenal. But this is as close as I can get. And this is really, really good. So, mm -hmm. mm. very tasty. But of course, nothing's as good and nothing is better than the juice straight from the fruit, unpasteurized, right? So, my first experience, my first time experience in an Arizona summer is I am absolutely loving it, you guys. Coming from Alaska, I'm loving it, okay? <laughs> I have never experienced this much sunshine, this much clear blue skies and this much heat and warmth year-round ever in my life. This is wonderful, okay? Now, first of all, I want to also say is obviously I don't know how to tan. I'm Alaskan, so up there in Alaska it's pretty hard to get a tan and so my tanning um, abilities are zero obviously because my, my I see it on my legs and then I see it on my arms like okay Stace we're gonna have an odd looking body here because my tan is just it's off okay and it shows <laughs> so I have to work on that um, but it's very easy to tan here in Arizona you, you don't have to you don't have to actually go out there and tan you just go about your day and you're tanning no matter what without even knowing it and it's lovely <laughs> So since I haven't experienced this much sunshine and heat before, I'm out in it all the time. And I am, of course, learning to always bring water with you, cool water, and try to stay cool as much as possible. Um, but I'm, I really love the heat. I enjoy the, the heat. I think it feels good. But I am definitely someone who likes the happy medium, who does like to stay cool also. I understand that it is, it is more comfortable, comfortable to be more at a cooler temperature and it is also beneficial that way for health reasons too. I know it's not good to get to be super super cold but it's not it's also not good to be super super hot and like I said in my first videos I was sharing with you guys when I first moved to Arizona that Arizona was not my first choice of a state to move to because that was the main thing that scared me about Arizona was the high heat now that I've been through through in Arizona for at least half a year now and I'm experiencing the high temperatures now I can definitely see that if I had a choice between the extreme cold in the Alaska climate versus Arizona, I would choose the heat in Arizona in a heartbeat because Alaska, 
uh, a cold climate. There, there, a lot comes with a cold climate, okay? <laughs> a lot more is tacked on with a cold climate. And so I would choose a warm, hot climate like Arizona in a heartbeat. Um, and I would rather deal with the heat than deal with the cold. That's just Miss Stacy, here, guys, okay? So, um, of course, it's depending on what you want in your life, what you want for your health too, because there's a lot of people out there who find those really cold climates and snow and ice is so ideal for them that they don't want to leave something like that. So it depends on what you like, what what you like. There, got, there is so many places on this planet for for us to live there is a place for everybody i have experienced some health problems so um health concerns as the heat has been rising here in arizona and i'm getting the hang of it um my body has never gone through excessive heat like this a day in and day out ever okay so i'm acclimating to it it's just like in a cold climate up there in alaska or other cold climate place states you know or uh places your body acclimates to the temperature. It's amazing how the body does that. So it's kind of interesting when it gets down into the 70s and the 60s here at night, um, I actually got goosebumps, which is weird to think. That is so weird to think that. And um, cause I'm acclimating to the, the 90s and the hundreds now, but it's just like in Alaska or in those cold climates, like when you go through 40, 50, and 60 below, 20 below feels warm. You can actually feel the warmth in 20 below. And so it's amazing how the body acclimates. Yeah, it's still cold at those temperatures, and yeah, it's still hot at those higher temperatures, but your body still acclimates. It's amazing that the human, the human body, the machine, what it does, to stay alive, you know, it's just absolutely amazing. But the health problems I've been experiencing is the swelling of my feet and my ankles, the heat exhaustion, heat sickness. So I've had headaches, I've been sick to my stomach where I felt like I needed to throw up a couple times. Um, I didn't actually throw up, but I really felt the urge to throw up. I felt really sick to my stomach. And I knew it was the heat because I am out in the heat as much as I, it's just soaking it up, sucking it up, you know, and not realizing that I'm actually over overheated and I don't realize it until the symptoms have already come about me so again I'm learning and I'm getting the hang of the Arizona heat here um, I know we're not full-fledged into summer just yet but um, we have been in the 90s for quite uh, for many days now and we've hit the hundreds for s several days too already but it's amazing how this isn't even summer yet. <laughs> but it's lovely though, it's lovely. I, I do understand and how, understand how important it is to stay cool though. Uh, that's, it's for your health because yeah, you can die out there in the heat. Just like in the cold, you can die out there in the cold, uh, but uh, you can die out there in the heat too. So it's, it's serious, just as serious as it is in a cold climate too. Um, so I do take it seriously and I am aware of it and, um, but I'm still out in it, but I know what I need to do in order to uh, I know what I have to do on a daily basis when it's really hot now and um, when it's really hot I kind of know how to handle things and how to do things a little bit better than when it first arrived. So I, I noticed this with the swelling of my feet and my ankles. I noticed that when I was traveling on my uh, trips to find a state to relocate to. Um, I when I, I went to California and uh, and here to Tucson in Arizona a couple times before I actually permanently moved to Tucson, Arizona here. And in California and in Arizona on all those trips, my feet and my ankles always swelled. And that's because it was in the 80s and the 90s when I went. So I'm not used to those high temperatures. And that's what I'm getting at with the acclimation. Um, in time, I, like right now, I kind of don't have that as severe as when I as when the heat first arrived. I feel like I'm acclimating to it now. I do have some swelling, but um, it's not as much as when the heat first arrived. I mean, my feet, my ankles were huge. I'm like, oh my gosh, this heat, holy cow. I've never seen such fat feet before, you know? I'm like, I don't have fat feet. <laughs> and I know how tiny my feet kind of are, and I'm like, whoa, they're huge. <laughs> they're huge, but um, it's the swelling. I am a lot more, 
thirsty too. Even though I eat a very high water rich diet, uh, high raw, uh, raw vegan, high raw, um, I noticed in Alaska I never really drank just straight water because my diet provided me all the liquid I needed. In a cold climate you just kind of don't desire liquids. It's kind of odd. It's kind of weird. But in a hot climate I'm noticing I'm desiring more liquid above and beyond what my diet provides. You know, so I find that kind of interesting, and it's it's interesting because I'm just in a hotter climate, so the body's just sucking up the water like crazy. So I drink a lot of water, like right here, you guys. I have, um, I always keep it cold, but I got big. I never used to do this in Alaska, but now I do here, and um, I make sure I always take water with me and lots of it. And it's amazing how much water I go through um, in a day, on top of my um my high raw diet you know but yeah the sickness and everything i knew it wasn't something i ate because you you don't get sick when you eat plant foods <laughs> when especially raw plant foods it's like impossible to get sick like sick to your stomach where you're going to want to throw up um, if you get that that means there's some sort of in my opinion some sort of detox going on or there's some sort of cleansing going on um but I knew this was heat related because I've never really had headaches in a long, long time. Ever since I went raw, high raw vegan and everything, I have never really gotten sick, um, like the sniffles or anything, or sore throat, or headaches, or even sick to my stomach or anything. So I knew this was heat related. And when I looked up the symptoms of it, I was like, yep, this is heat exhaustion. So Stace, this is important. Don't push it, woman. <laughs> so I make sure I definitely cool down and I don't uh, push it. Um, I definitely know my point where I'm like, okay, I'm too hot now. I need, really need to cool down. Um, but a lot of, some people have asked me if I have an air conditioning, if I have air conditioning, and I definitely do. It's included in the rental home that I'm in right now, and it's actually on right now. So I cool it down into the 70s, lower 70s is where I kind of like it, where I think it's comfortable. Alrighty guys, so I will stop babbling here, I'll stop babbling, and I will let you guys go. Remember to always love being right. Put a big old smile on your face today. I hope I did that for you, and I will see you guys next video, okay? Bye, guys.